Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another episode of the Family Podcast with your two favourite brothers. My name is Sammy. My name is Don. And welcome to the show everybody. Now, today mm-hmm. we're talking about ce- like celebrities, Yeah. mostly celebrities who have decided for one reason or another mm-hmm. not to leave any money for their chichen. Mm-hmm. The chicha. I told my kids the other day, I said, let me explain something to y'all. If something happened to me and mama, I want you all to understand, y'all going to be around the casket crying because I'm not leaving you everything. <laughs> I'm just not. I'm going to spend 85% of my income on me and your mama. So, yeah, so what's... What, what's let's, start, let's just start off, innit? Like, what's your views on celebs... Or people in general who say, like, they're not going to leave nothing to their kids when they have something to leave. I've actually wrestled with this for a long time. Oh. Yeah, because I always believe, yeah, you can spend your whole life building an empire and all it takes is one child who, you know, doesn't have the capability because sometimes they just don't, isn't it? Or Tion Greyjoy. Yeah, or some pe- yeah <laughs> it, it makes it feel Greyjoy. Yeah, he's someone who just didn't have the capability. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, or like sometimes it's that they just don't want to. They they can be great, but they just choose not to be in it. Mm. Um, and I feel like all of that is set up by how much you give them. Mm. Whether whether I like it or not, it always comes back to that point. It it really is about how much access you give them to to resources, and and how hungry they are. If you give them resources all the time, if you give anybody anything all the time, every time that they want it, they get it, they become conditioned to that. Mm. Well, why can't I have it? I'm sure your daughter said that to you. Daddy, why can't I have it? Yeah. And then you have to explain to her, it's not the right time, or we don't have it, or you can't get it, which means that in her life, she will ultimately strive to get what she wants because she understands that there's always a time where she can't get it. Well, or there will, there will always be a time where she can't get it, you know? And what do you do when you can't get something? You strive to reach it, yeah? Or you steal it. Oh. No, I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> you, bro. <laughs> but yeah, so it's kind of... <laughs> so it's kind of like, um, you know, that if you give them everything, then uh, what do you expect them to learn? Mm. And, and sometimes we, we, we're guilty of that given children way too much we set them up for life you know mm. um and it'll be interesting to hear someone like Krep's view on this you know mm. like who who has actually done it because it's one thing to say ah oh, yeah bro i'm gonna set my children up for life it's another thing to actually do it yeah and do it well you know but then who knows his daughter you know god forbid isn't it but his daughter could grow up and just have a massive shopping habit because she just got so much bread and yes, she's living the life and maybe he thinks it's amazing, but life is, you know, like as Nipsey says, it's a marathon. Yeah. So what happens when you get to the end and because of your decisions and start, you have zero. Hopefully you'll learn how to make it back up again because you would have been given the resources. But imagine you can't. Then all that the person put in to put money down for you was for nothing. You may as well start with nothing. Mm. It's mad, isn't it? Yeah. So for me... I. When I think about this situation, mm. I tend to think about a lot of the time when we draw people from this, mm. we think about celebrities. Yeah. And I think it's kind of dangerous to think about celebrities because celebrities have to contend with fame. Mm. And I think fame can be corrupting. Okay. Yeah. So Especially when you're young. Like if you're young and you drive a a really expensive car and you're famous and your girlfriend's famous as well. Mm. There's a whole load of controversies that can happen around your life as a young person. And I think a lot of the time that is attributed to the money aspect Mm. and not the fame aspect. Because when you look at families who have been extremely successful for a number of years, Mm -hmm. they're not famous and they tend to do a lot better this is anecdotal yeah i'd have to actually read up about whether i can even compare the two but just from what i observe and what i look at Mm -hmm. 
it seems as if families who are like banking families, yeah? Yeah. Their children tend to be well adjusted. They go to school. Yeah, they might do a bit of blow and a bit of ketamine when they're younger, mm -hmm. right? But so do the man them from Croydon. Mm. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like that just might be I'm part of tarnish the man from Croydon. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the galley's from Craig. No, <laughs> yeah, is, he, is he just kind of reporting this kind of fake news, yeah? This is why nobody wants to come to, to, to Craig. <laughs> yeah, not yeah, the okay. bankrupt council, though. Yeah. Huh? Huh? <laughs> but, like, you are firing shots, boy. <laughs> but um, listen, if I ended up, if I end up self-deleting, it wasn't me, yeah? I did not do it. I'm very happy where I am, yeah? It was Craig and council. <laughs> <laughs> I, but in all in all seriousness, mm. um, I feel like when you look at those type of families, they tend yeah. to be more well adjusted. They they go to school. There's parameters for their um, their wealth. So, for example, they don't get anything until they're 21 or they're 18. Mm. Um, a lot of the finances is used to enrich their like um, educational experiences. So, like wrangling like with schools. So. They go to a school, they give a very hefty donation to the school mm -hmm. and then their son or daughter ends up going to the school. Things like that, yeah? Um, or they have lots of tutors or they play um, like sports, you know, and and they're able to use their finances to like carve out their children a lot more. Mm. Um I don't want to say normally, but without all of that abhorrent stuff that goes on when we look at famous children. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because I feel like fame is a really important component when you talk about whether you should leave your kids money, you know? But um, you know, they, but they, this is the thing that makes it so hard. It's all hypothetical, isn't it? Because mm. what happens if your child, through you leaving their money, becomes famous? So we all know what like kids mm. in school are like, yeah. Yeah. It, it doesn't matter whether your parents saved up for it or whether they didn't. If you turn eighteen and you buy yourself a Range Rover, you're already out from the normal. Yeah, you're flossing. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're out from the normal cohort of people. Yeah. So then that drives an attraction to yourself, you know, and then if by the time you come out of uni, so what's that? What like twenty? 21, uh, depending on yeah, what kind of yeah, course you yeah, do, 21, yeah. 22. Yeah. And you, you buy yourself a five bedroom house. Yeah. That again is not the norm. You may not be famous. Yeah. yeah. But, but people are starting to say, Ra, you see, you see Sammy's daughter. It's a bit mad, you know, like she's doing some stuff that isn't, my mom can't afford. Yeah, <laughs> but that's, that's what you, like for me, that's what you want. Yeah, of course. Like, of course I, that's what you want. Yeah, but yeah. what I'm saying is, is the, the popularity may increase yeah it may put you in certain rooms and yeah. then you may become famous even yeah. though your your aim wasn't to make your you know your, your, kid your kid famous yeah through the money that you've pumped in you, so when we say we're negating it i think we we should negate it because as you said it's a very important component but also we have to compare and contrast because there are situations that may having a lot of money may propel you know um your your child to fame yeah no so, i understand and that. if you're against fame then that's going to be problematic yeah so you should probably I'm, not give them the money in the first place so yeah i understand that mm. but i still feel like one you can be somewhat comparative like with mm. the amount of money that you give them Fair you enough. know so like for example when you're 21 that's when you get access to your first i don't know hundred thousand two hundred quarter mm. you know cool that's enough to like buy your house, buy a nice little car to go with it or whatever. Mm -hmm. When you finish university, yeah. when other people are kind of like struggling to like get on the housing market, you know that your kid's going to be on there immediately. Mm. And maybe that leads to some issues, right? So mm. that maybe they've, you know, they didn't necessarily have to work for it. Mm. But what is the point breaking your back as a parent to finally get in a position to be able to reward your children and then not rewarding them. And then giving it to someone else's yeah, children. Yeah, and then give it, yeah. And then so for me, I I understand 
And also, also, because we're talking about, we we originally started talking about wills, innit? Yeah. Like, you're not even going to be there anymore. Do you understand mm, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. And so, you kind of give, you you let, I would say that you spend the first 18 to 20 years mm-hmm. laying down, like, what is to be, like, a normal... That hard-working person. Yeah. You know, somebody who's kind of adjusted, someone who isn't, like, fame-hungry. Mm. Yeah, because I think... Somebody who's not fame hungry, they're able to navigate fame in a way that people who are fame hungry are not. Yeah. Right? Because it's a bit like, you know when guys chase after women? Yeah. You can see the desperation and that makes them Mm. unattractive. Hey, you're disgusting. However, when a woman doesn't really know if a man's interested, so it's like, you're not totally distant, Mm. but... She doesn't know if there's another girl in the picture. So, like, it's alluring. Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah, like, there's jeopardy with this. Per- I could lose this person to someone else. Mm. Yeah? I think that kind of mechanic works well when we're talking about fame as well. It's mm. so, like people who don't necessarily want fame, like, they tend to get a lot of it. Kendrick seems to be like that. Mm-hmm. Somebody who doesn't want too much, of too it. much fame. Yeah. But every time he pops up, people go nuts. Yeah. You know? As opposed to like people who are a bit clout shark, it's no names come to mind at the moment. Mm. But we all know those type of people. You know, anytime there's controversy, they're there. Um, anytime there's a way to like manipulate something into their own thing, they're there. You know, and it's it's just a weird. It gives off a weird vibe, and so mm. if you're more comfortable because you've been around money before, and also it helps them get out of like terrible deals right mm. because people like my and i'm just using a fame example in it somebody might say to them like well we want you to be on this television show like mm. rich kids of whatever we're gonna pay you this but you're used to money yeah so you're gonna be like what can i do with like that's that's nothing to me in it yeah, like, yeah, yeah you gotta come back with a better deal whereas if you're somebody who's never had money before and somebody offers you 10 grand you're like 10 grand yeah like sign me up wow, like, yeah, that get me this, that get me that. Mm. But, like, when you've had 10 grand, bro, that's a couple red cameras, you're done. Yeah. When it's a couple red cameras, you'll you be know? lucky, bro. That's <laughs> one red camera and some accessories. <laughs> you know yeah, facts, yeah, yeah, it's all in. Yeah, and then it's all done out, innit? Like, mm. it's not just the leaving of the money. Mm. It's the educate. it's the preparation. Okay. You know, it's the preparation of um, it that makes it, okay for me because I know that like if I was in that position that is the kind of position I would be trying to take do you understand what I'm saying like to prepare my children like even now I'm trying to prepare my children for for financial like literacy do you reckon it's working yeah because sometimes um so now when Faith gets given money yeah Mm -hmm. she'll be like oh I have to put some in my piggy bank yeah, mm-hmm. because we told her, like, you don't spend everything that you get. Yeah. Once you get something, you save half of it. Because she's young, mm-hmm. yeah, she can save half. She's got no bills. She's got no outgoing expenses, nothing. Yeah. Whatever somebody gives you, you can afford to put away half. Yeah. Yeah? Five pounds to a four-year-old is nothing, yeah? Mm-hmm. I mean, it's a lot of money. They They can go mad with it. Yeah, you give five pounds to me. Don't you wish you loved those bro. days where five years old getting a fiver and you're thinking, "Bro, I got all the money in the world." Yeah, I I remember I used to find like five pound in the in the street, in it. And after I um made sure I did all of the things to find out who the owner was, <laughs> and if they did not come forward, you did what? You came from Fort Heath, bro. It's not lying. And um, once it wasn't reclaimed, mm. then I. <laughs> I spent it, and you know, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Um, that was a lot to me. Like finding that five pound was mm. mad, like you know. But if I found five pound now, I'd be like, raw electric still I forget pay. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Like, so he used to say, one of my cousins used to be like, five pounds not even enough to wipe your ass with. <laughs> You see what I'm saying? And so, and so, like, um, so she understands mm. that 
that's what she has to do. She yeah. can't spend all of her money. So I think it is working. Um, and I think just le- like teaching your f- kids things like that. Um, yeah, don't yeah. just let like your fame and their fame wash over them. Yeah. Like tell them about the mechanics of money. Yeah. Mm. Um, because most people see money as fun tokens. Like spend on Balenciaga, spend on Lamborghini, spend on thing once you have it. Yeah. Mm. But actually, like, it's a way to invest in assets and for that assets to bring you more money. money yeah. you know? I'm not going to speak like a financial advisor because I'm not. And, you know, I don't... I'm not in the business of telling people how to get money, this, that, 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 mm. or crypto or all of that. I don't, I don't know enough about all of that stuff to think. But there are sensible things that you can do um, in order to make sure that your money, like, goes further, in it. So, to me, I just think it's kind of mad, like... You're dead and gone, in it, yeah. Mm. And then you would just give away all of your yeah, money like, people to, did. to people who like. And I get the like, oh, the charity and stuff. Yeah, mm. calm. Like maybe if you're gonna do what Bill Gates is gonna do, like he said, he's gonna leave like one percent to his kids. Yeah, but like, the dude's a billionaire, so one percent is mad. Yeah, mm. maybe for something like that, then I can get on board with. But you got guys like I think Ashton. Kutcher and Mila Kunis, they're together, in it? I don't know, you know. Okay, I think yeah. I think so. They came out and they were like, you know, we're not going to leave no money for our kids. It's going to go to char- charity. Mm. Steve Harvey straight up just said, I'm going to spend it. I'm mm. taking it to the grave. Like, you lot ain't got nothing. Charity is not getting nothing. Yeah. Me, I'm going to spend it on this moustache cream, you know, and Gordon everything. Ramsay like that as well. Yeah, see? And so for me, I'm just like, raw. I'm not sure that he spends frivolously, but, you know, is that correct? Frivolously. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I know that he um, he doesn't put his children in first class. He said they haven't earned it. So he sits in first class. And see, they do kind you of, see things like that, yeah? yeah? A lot of men mm. feel like it's cool to do that. Mm. Like it makes them seem more manly to make their kids endure. Mm. Yeah. And to an extent, yes. But things like that, no. If I'm going to ride in first class, like my family's going to ride in first class. If we all ride in economy, that's different. Yeah. yeah. Everyone's riding in economy. But you're not going to say like, oh, you haven't earned it. It's like, I'm 10, mother... <laughs> <laughs> hey, do you know one-liners are killing me, fam. <laughs> Every time I bust up, I, I get more slumped into this chair. <laughs> Hey, that's funny. Do you feel what I was saying? Yeah. So it's like, it's mad. Like, and there was this clip going viral all the time. My grandfather walked 10 miles to work every day. My father walked five. I'm driving a Cadillac. My son is in a Mercedes. He said my grandson will be in a Ferrari. But he said my great grandson will be walking again. So I asked him, I said, well, why is that? And he said to me, tough times create strong men. Strong men create easy times. Easy times create weak men. Weak men create tough times. Yeah, but you're the one in the Mercedes, bro. Mm. Yeah, so it's good enough for you, but you want to impoverish your, your children because you think it's cool to struggle like that. Yeah, they would argue that they worked for it. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. But there were the same way your father, mm. yeah, drove something superior to his father. Mm. Yeah. That's the trend that you want to carry on. Why are you saying that like you want to impoverish? Like um, you want to make sure that your children that come before you are impoverished to a degree that you were not impoverished to. You understand what I'm saying? So like even your but dad some of them, hold on, hold yeah. on, even your dad mm. driving Oh yeah, he was driving. Yeah, in that yeah. example, I suppose. Yeah, because yeah, your dad is driving something better than your granddad, yeah. Mm. And you still worked hard to get to where you got to. Yeah. yeah. So we shouldn't discount the fact that some people really enjoy the lives that they live. Mm. They enjoy the comfortability and stuff like that. And because of that, they work towards that now some kids are lazy and some parents are neglectful this is something that you can't take away as well mm. that how much have you prepared your child in order to inherit what you're going to give them 
Mm. Okay. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm yeah. saying? Because one thing to say, oh yeah, listen, man, uh, uh, children must suffer, right? But what conditions have you set for your children to understand the parameters of suffering? Do your mm. do your kids play sports where they like get kick up, and nobody cares who their name is? So what happens? Uh, would you be more like more open to the idea that you funded your child up to a certain point, and then after that they had to be independent? So, like, for example, let's say that you're, I don't know, millionaire, billionaire, whatever, and you say, okay, listen, all up until the age that while you're studying, you can have whatever, yeah? I'm going to pay for whatever, best education. If you learn how to drive within that time, I'll buy you the best car that you want, whatever your situation is, calm. But the day that you hit 19 or 20 or 21, you are on your own. Does that sit better with you? No. No. Okay. So the way that if I had the money, mm-hmm. yeah, the way that I would function is this. Everything gets put into your self-development. Yeah. Mm. So if you want to play sport, a sport where you learn teamwork, toughness, those type of things, we'll work hard to put you in an academy, mm-hmm. you know, um, not just like grassroots football, but like an mm. academy okay. where they train you in specific skills that like, Premier League teams are looking for, La Liga teams are looking for. Mm. Yeah, I'm just using football as this example. Um, with your studying, you're going to get tutors in, in addition to your academic studies. Mm. They're going to help you with your homework and they're going to teach you more about the subject and go more in depth. Yeah. yeah? They're going to do that. Um, well, we might get you a financial advisor to look over your stuff, your spending and whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, and tell you like how to build a portfolio when you're about 16 or whatever. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> All of these things to do with self development, I'm here for. Mm. But you can't buy an expensive car. Okay. Yeah? So you can't buy any like expensive trappings. Yeah. Yeah, you can't do that. So no right? big chains, no, no. cars, no, no. So Louis if I, v, no. V bags. No, so if I have media company, yeah. like if I have like a media company, part of the the journey is you understanding what daddy does in it like mm. how he comes to set up this and how he how he negotiates contracts with other people mm. <clears throat> and learning those skills as well it's on you to teach your children man yeah so after they've completed their education mm. then they get a sum of money a lump sum of money that's okay. to help them outside of thing where they might not be working can they buy whatever they want get with that settled. They can buy whatever they want with that, but I'll be overlooking. So if they go out and they buy a house, that's cool. Yeah? Mm. If they use it to go to Vegas and they come back with 100000 left after they've got like a £250,000 lump sum thing, mm. I'm like, I don't know if I can trust you with the rest of my money. Okay. Yeah? So then I think that you should feed your children lump sum money mm. at various stages of their life. When you feel like you're getting to an age that's appropriate, mm-hmm. right? For some people, it's 45. For some people, it's 65. But with this thing, you've got to be careful because you don't know when you're going to die. Yeah. Yeah. So you could have the intention to write a will when you're 60. Mm. You die at 55. Yeah. Well, gone. So I think as soon as it, you can get a picture as to what your children look like, yeah, look, look like in terms of is Man, money going to ruin them or is money going to empower them? Mm-hmm. Then you start writing your will. This is what I bequeath to this person and that person, yeah? Yeah. And then you die, you go in the dirt. Whatever my son and my daughter choose to be with the funds allocated to them, mm-hmm. that's who they choose to be. I'm not alive anymore. Yeah. Do you feel what I'm saying? I'm not alive. All I can... So you feel like, do you feel like you kind of lose responsibility? Well, you do. Like, this... you know what it is? You have to... At, at certain points in your children's life, yeah, mm. you just have to give it to God and hope that your you have to hope that your parenting mm. was of a quality that allowed them to maneuver, you know, because you're gonna be gone. Yeah. But yeah. if you've taught your children like good rules. pick good friends mm. and their friends are good friends, mm. your good their good friends are going to assist them through life. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? And hopefully they have the power of discernment as children, whatever, to um, move on um, and prosper with what you've given them. Okay. <clears throat> That's kind of how I see it. 
I mean, it makes sense. It, it does make sense. It does make sense. I mean, I just feel like most people, I don't know, just as to their tasks of things to do, isn't it? But I mean, I suppose like you decide to bring a child into the world. So yeah, bro, like you have to look after and, and nurture your child and people only know what they learn. So, you know, there's no point bringing somebody into into the world and then locking them in a room and then taking them out of a dark room and then being like, oh yeah, by the way, have you heard of economics? You know, like they're going to be like, nah, I don't know what you're talking about. Mm. Like, oh yeah, well, I want you to be good with spending. Okay, well, I've never spent before. I don't know money. I don't know the value mm. of it. So yeah, it makes sense. I mean, I I don't know. I mean, I I think I would like to give my children everything. Um, but I'd probably end up making a mistake. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm. I'd, cause I don't like not to have in it. So my child would be like, "I oh, can I have this," and I'll probably be like, "Yeah." And I'd be like, "Can I have this?" I'll probably be like, "Yeah." Mm. I'd be like, "Can I have this?" I'll probably be like, "Yeah." Um, but then I wonder, at the point where I try to rectify it, will it be too late? Yeah, if that makes sense. You created a standard. Yeah, yeah. So <clears throat> potentially. We might have to put a pause on that one still. Mm. Um, you might get nothing until I figure out the plan. Oh. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, no, because I know, I know myself, in it. Like, you know, I, I want to lavish my children. So, mm. Why do you think that the, the struggle narrative is so popular? In terms of, oh, what, in terms like, of like, like no, I'm not going to give, give my kids anything. stuff so that, um, so that they need to struggle and get what they deserve in their own life. I think, there's two reasons. I think one, people feel like they are actually doing like their child a service. You know, mm. they feel like I learned the hard way. You should also learn the hard way. You know, it, it comes back to habit. It's kind of like I did this, so you should be able to do what I did, didn't it? Mm. Um, and I think the second thing is generally around um, not wanting to to make the mistake of giving too much to. Um, too early mm. yeah and and they feel that there's there's possible there's a possibility that someone can learn from something mm. you know so um, yeah that's what I, that's what I'd say yeah I mm. mean I think I think it's a difficult one this is actually a very nuanced topic because mm. for as much as I've been screeching about you know um, yeah you should do your mm. thing. Like, not everything goes to plan. Yeah. You know, and not everything is as utopian as you like it. Yeah. So, you know, you could say to your kid, yeah, listen, this is what I want you to do. Um, Like, go to school, I'm going to give you all the best tutors. And they're mm. like, I hate school. Yeah. I'm not going to graduate. I'm not going to go to university. I'm not going to graduate. Mm. You know? That's mad. Yeah. Yeah. And because some kids are like that. Yeah. And they just know? tell you how it is, isn't it? Yeah. Like, and then it's a case where it's like, raw. this person is not, this child is not doing the things that, you know, I feel like would be beneficial to their life. And then again, it's like, as a parent, what right do you have to control your child after a certain age? What are you saying, yeah. like, um, St. Patrick? Did, yeah. did you finish watching Power? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, so he, what, what was it? Like, unless you achieve something like a 98, something GDP, what did they call it? GDP, yeah. Yeah, GDP. I think so. Um, or GED, yeah, yeah, whatever. Then his money don't get released. Yeah, so he has to, he has to, to go, go to school. school. Yeah, he yeah, has yeah, to, yeah. he has to go to school and he has to pass. Yeah, and what did he do? Even though he's bad, yeah, he went, he went, went to school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is what I'm. But saying. I mean, you, you ain't on the power book. No, no, so no I ain't on the power book. <laughs> yeah, so you gotta chill <laughs> with that stuff. No, you know, yeah, so. but um, it was an imp impetus for him to go to, to go. Yeah, to no, of course, so, of course, yeah, yeah. So again, it is, it is quite difficult obviously we're not giving any prescriptions we're just talking through ideas mm. we all understand like me and you we've come from ha not having no money mm. you know not that we come from poverty or whatever but mm. like me and you individually ha have known what it's like like raw uh, um, bro if i tap this yeah. and it goes through well listen the tide's gonna be heavy listen, yeah, <laughs> bro, like, but, listen even in 2000s yeah mm. Two pound for school was brazy, bro. Yeah. You had to, you had to be uh, a businessman. You had to, you had to buy something that you could shot in school to make more than two pound. Two pound weren't making nothing. That's a roll, a cheese roll, yeah, <laughs> a juice and a chocolate. That's how yeah, you're yeah. getting by, yeah. Or them, um, I don't know whether everyone had them, but them Simpson donuts, the the sugar strand donuts. 
the multi colored ones. Me, mm. me and S know them as the homie the donuts. Ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So you know, you get a local donut and that, bro. Your money's done out, done yeah. out after school when everyone's buying, going to buy chips here yeah, or donut kebab and that you're excluded. <laughs> you get me? <laughs> so you know, we yeah. that we we know what that's like, isn't it? Not to say that we never had, in it. We had, in it. But yeah. we we had to a point where. If you was resourceful, you would get more. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, you know, I, I don't know how I would feel like consigning my kids to a life where they didn't. And do you know what it is? That mm. For me, the m- money is like a way to experience things. You know, like to travel, to, to like eat at places where not everyone's eaten before. Like mm. experience certain cuisines and... and a lot more of those things, you know. Um, so to me, it's kind of crazy how somebody would say, I'm going to deprive my my young children of that. And it might not even be that, you know, we're making a huge assumption mm. that like when a person passes away, their children are still young. Yeah. You know, that this could be additional money that helps them with their family and the raising of their own children that they mm. have now, you know. Um you could even write into your will that your grandchildren get stuff, you know, yeah. and, and things like this. And I feel like those things are like, that can actually change a person's life, you know. Mm. Like, if they've decided to have like a pretty normal life, yeah, mm. they've gone to university, they've done their things, you're quite wealthy, and they're, they're like, um, they've gone into law, for example. Yeah. And, um, they work. They're not a massive partner or anything like that, mm. but they just work in law. They got a decent salary. Yeah. But then, like, you leaving a will to them, what I've noticed is children of celebrities, yeah? Yeah. Although they tend to be a bit crazy, famous-wise, like, they never tend to emulate their their fathers or their mothers who are famous. Very few times you get, like, a dynasty of musical talent or... um or like acting talent okay very few i think the douglases are like the only like dynasty uh really no nah, the waynes the waynes yeah but look at the the son of damon wayne yeah it's just that's true he's been in a couple things but he's not he's nowhere near the level what about the smiths yeah same they're nowhere near the level and of, that's yeah. what i'm saying and that's what i'm yeah. saying most of them different don't time as the well heights. yeah so then that money can act as a protection from them going down a certain route. Now, it might not, innit? Mm. Again, this is all nuance. It might not. But it might, you know. This might be the reason that your kid don't end up in Skid Row after a failed acting career. Mm. It's this money that you've left them. Or why they're not, like, bouncing around from, like, bussing tables and waiting on people or doing, like, unscrupulous things like, you know, giving Weinstein noddy, you know? <laughs> Because they need, wow. yeah. Because they need the job. Do you understand yeah. what I'm saying? Like they need the job. So how do you feel about people who aren't, um, who aren't like million trillionaires, isn't it? Mm. But they they got a cool couple. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm. Couple thousands, isn't it? They're like, you know, like somebody who has like some maybe like three hundred thousand in the bank, mm. you know, um, which is what like somebody's like mortgage price. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. Um, like, how do you feel about them? Do you feel like they should do the same thing? Yes, of course. Yeah. You know, I, I was reading this thing. Do you feel like I they should do- Only 35% of people in the UK have a will for when they pass away, despite hope, home ownership percentage sitting around 65%. Do you think they should deprive themselves to give their family wealth? So, like, for example, I know, obviously, I'm not Asian, innit? But I've heard, and obviously, again, working in social services, I see a lot of things where family members kind of downplay their own life. Not even downplay, because it's not up. You know, they, mm. they make sacrifices on their own life to mm. make sure that their, their children have the best resources. Mm. You think it's the same thing? You think that's cool? That's calm? Or do you um, reckon that they yeah. should live some of the life that they've worked towards? Um, I think it depends on your temperament. Like, mm. certain people need that. Certain people need comfort. Yeah. You know, they need their mattress to be a certain type of mattress. Oh, that they is need, definitely me, bro. Yeah, they need, they, need, they need certain comforts in their life mm. in order for them to, to, like, not spiral into things like depression and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. we're not just working for the working. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so then for those people, I would say, yeah. 
But some people are so like they're proper frugal in it. Where are like, you? Oh, they take like two minutes in the bath because they don't want. That's wild. Yeah, that but, wild. those are two extremes. Yeah, yeah two extremes. Yeah. So I'm kind of in the middle. I had a feeling you were going to yeah, say. Yeah, I like nice. I like nice things. But people who live in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. Okay. Talking to me about sitting on the fence and getting splinters and looky <laughs> all up on the same fence. But go on. <laughs> Let me just moonwalk a little. <laughs> <laughs> You know, um, mm. no, because I say if I have to, if I had to le- lean one side or the other, yeah. I'd probably say I'm more into comfort, but I really yeah. don't like um, this idea of in making the people around me have a worse life. Oh, because of all, yeah, because of what spending I'm, habits. Because basically. of what I'm doing, yeah, I, I can't do that. Mm. Like, I, I, I married somebody in it, mm. and that person's now joined joined to me yeah and so yeah. to take her life and like make it worse mm. that is something that sits really uncomfortably with me it makes sense so i always try and this that's why i say it's hard like what when um when you ask that kind of question because mm. i don't want our lives to be destitute because then that means my wife's life as a consequence is is destitute Shoot, yeah. yeah or like less than what she would have like have envisaged for being my partner. Mm. Yeah. So you can't do it too hard. Yeah. Yeah. Because you force the person that you live with to endure that with you. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, you want your children to have the experiences and um, some of the, um, yeah, some of the life experiences, some of the luxuries that you may have never experienced, you mm. want your children to have those, or you should, you know. Um, and so it's uh, being a parent like that is a very delicate balance between balancing your wants and needs mm. with the wants and needs of your children. So that's why it seems like I'm sitting on the fence. Mm. But like, obviously, I don't want to be sleeping on some hard would do you know what I'm <laughs> saying? Like, on the floor with a sleeping bag. Yeah, yeah, you know. Um the kids want duck feather pillows and you know um ten million quail mattresses. Yeah. That's that's basically my view view on that. I think that people should leave money to their kids. I think the only exception if your your child is just wild and re- re- reckless because the the chances are your money that your money is gonna exacerbate exactly, yeah, their yeah, chaos yeah. and they it's gonna lead to them suffering more than anything. But if your children are fairly well adjusted, uh don't be a fool, man. Mm. Leave them some cash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, people, you know. No, what are you saying though? What, what am I saying yeah, before yeah, I put yeah. it a rap? Yeah, quick round down. Um oh, man. Um yeah, I think you should leave your children some money. I think you should, you know. Yeah, um yeah. I think you're working towards better, not working towards the same or worse, you know. Mm. We're not, we, we don't go backwards. <laughs> we go forward. You get me? So, Done, yeah. you know, it, that wouldn't make sense for me to put my children back in the situation that I was in. Um, and yeah, unless it was necessary for their learning, mm. you know. And I think as a parent, you should try to be engaged to try and figure that out, you know, that some children, as we said, that you can give them the money, it's never going to change anything. Even if you give them the money with the lesson, lesson goes in one ear and they're just thinking, <laughs> yo, when can I buy my range? Yeah. So it doesn't matter what you say, what you do, that child is still going to have, you know, that trait. And if you notice that, it would make sense to protect your assets. Um, but I think for every other normal person, yeah, come on, bro. Like, Give them some money, you know. Free what I'm up the peas. Yeah, free out the peas. Free out the peas. Not everyone wants to be doing Tesco meals. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So facts. So, ladies and gentlemen, let us know your views on this. Don't forget to like and subscribe because all of that works within the algorithm of jigs, you know, to help us grow this um this new channel. So, mm. thank you for listening. My name is Sammy. My name is Don, and we've been the family. Bow.